Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about the top 10 games that you can stop playing at any time and still have a satisfying experience. Kind of an apt uh, topic, right? The reason I'm exploring this is uh, a couple reasons, actually. One, I was at a game day the other day. We were outside, played outside, wore masks. We were very careful, just a few of us. Um, and we were playing a game that will be on this list. And someone else finished their game, and we were like, okay, well, we could finish our game, or we could stop right now and mix it with this other group that we've been playing longer games with, because we had played a longer game before this. And we decided that we had had a, a great experience playing the game, and that we could just drop it. We could finish the, the clue that we were on, and proceed to mix up and play um, with the other group. And we had still had a very satisfying experience playing this game. And I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to do a list of games that you can do this, where if you're playing at any time, you can say, okay, we're going to stop. And we're going to continue game night with uh, other people. Or we're going to move on at a convention um, to playing a longer game. Maybe you're waiting on other people. Um, so these do veer towards the, tra the, the filler side of things, but not all of them are like that. Um, and also I thought this was relevant for the holidays. Because if you are gathering safely with your families over the holidays, you might play a game and then suddenly get interrupted and uh, need to do something else. And so these games might be great for holiday playing because you can stop them at any time and still have had fun with them. Some games that Stomeyer Ambassadors recommended for this list that I didn't quite pick for it, but I see where they were coming from. One, uh, they chose Tainted Grail, which is a big sprawling exploration game where you can just stop at any time. It would be something that you might, might, might want to play over many scenarios. You do want to play over many scenarios, but you can stop at any time, pack it up, and then unpack it later at a future time. That one didn't quite make the list because it is a bit more sprawling and the cleanup isn't really instantaneous. It would take you a little bit to clean it up. I chose, uh, I didn't quite choose Legacy of Dragonhold. I chose another similar game for the list, but Legacy of Dragonhold is a wonderful game, story-driven game where you're reading through a storybook. It's very easy to clean up at any given time, and uh, you will have had the story to play through. The one thing is it's nice to play through a full day of Legacy of Dragonhold and get the full day experience, and so I didn't quite think it would be as good as this other game that I picked. Um, Ambassadors also chose Spyfall, Dixit, Concept, Balderdash, and Telestrations. Probably the closest of those, the closest of those to almost make the list was Telestrations. But one of the joys of Telestrations, which is a game where you are writing a clue and then someone else is drawing that clue and then someone else is writing what they think they drew and so on. One of the fun things about Telestrations is the final reveal where everyone gets to see what you drew and, and uh, what the stories of each of these books that you went through. So if you had to cut the game off and you didn't get to that point, part, that's kind of spoiling the whole game. Like that's the fun of playing Telestrations. So in number 10, number 10 is the only one that isn't quite in the spirit of this list because it does take a little bit to pack up, but that is The Seventh Continent. Because The Seventh Continent, a sprawling exploration game, is designed around the idea of being able to stop at any time, easily pack it up. It's not quite that easy, but it is fairly easy to pack it up and, and then continue playing it at a different time. Um, Again, the reason this isn't quite in the spirit of the list is that it is a game that you, if you want to have that satisfying experience, you probably need to continue playing it at another time, especially if you've only been playing it for 10 or 15 minutes. But the exploration of the game is so satisfying and the little mini moments, the little mini goals that you achieve as you say, hey, let's go look at that thing over there and do something with it. And then you go do it. You could stop and still have had a satisfying experience after doing that in Seventh Continent. Um, so... I thought it was a viable entry for number 10 on this list, The Seventh Continent. At number eight on this list is When I Dream. I almost chose Dixit over this, but I think When I Dream is, is my preference for this list. In When I Dream, uh, players are on secret teams where you take turns putting on an actual blindfold as uh, players flip up a card and try to, uh, and they get to give you a clue for that card and you get to say what you think they are trying to get you to say. Um, and so there, there might be, a, the, the card might show a pizza on it. And so one by one players around the table will say like pepperoni or crust or things like that, trying to get you to say pizza. Um, and uh, some of the people are not actually on your team. And so they are giving you clues that are similar to those clues, but might steer you away a little bit. Like they might say, pe someone might say pepperoni and someone else might say pig. And so you might stop thinking about pepperoni, stop thinking about pizza and start thinking about farm animals at that point or meat processing. And so it's, it's a really, really fun game to play. And even though you are eventually playing for points, you're trying to have the most points um, despite the teams, it's still an individual victory because uh, the teams change every round. 
you can just have fun playing a single round of When I Dream because it is kind of outlandish fun to have someone actually blindfolded as they're trying to guess clues um, and trying to get through that that their their dream and also then try to describe the dream that they just had before they take the blindfold off. So that's why I put, oh, I just jumped forward to number eight. I skipped number nine. Uh, but this is When I Dream. I'll just change this to the number nine entry on the list and the no next one will be number eight because they were pretty close anyway. The next game is Wavelength. Wavelength is one of these wonderful games that you can even play remotely if you want. But if you are able to gather with people right now, Wavelength is a, is a great game that you can stop at any time because it's a little bit more of an activity than a game. Basically, in Wavelength, you have two different teams, and one person on one of the teams will, um, will have a word, and uh, they will show on a spectrum um, how strongly they feel about that word applied to something, something specific. And they get to think of the word. The word isn't given to them. Um, and all the other people on their team are trying to help them or trying to guess where on the spectrum that they are presented. The spectrum might be like softness and, and the person will give something, give a one word clue or, or a couple words, I think you can say, that fit in a specific, a specific element of the spectrum of softness from like soft to hard of this specific thing um, to, so, so that his teammates, his or her teammates, guess where on the spectrum this word falls. Um, it's a really kind of weird, clever game with a, with a big component that shows this, this spectrum, this wavelength element. Uh, but it is the type of game where you can play a single clue and be entertained whether or not you are on the team that's guessing or the other team, because the other team will participate as well and guess and make a guess themselves. So, wavelength. Now number eight on the list, previously number nine. <laughs> number seven on the list is the one that I almost chose Legacy of Dragonhold, but instead I went with Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. This is another story-driven game where you are presented with a mystery and you're trying to solve that mystery uh, by exploring a, a map of London and reading storybook entries along the way. It's fully cooperative, and it is this wonderful game where not only can you just stop at any time and come back to it if you want, but you can literally stop solving the mystery at any time and just go and declare that you are ready to solve the mystery. And so you could play this for 20 minutes and say, you know, we've had enough of this. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up. we got to go to dinner. Let's find out what actually happened and make some guesses. Or you could play it for an hour and do that. Or you could play for 20 minutes and then come back after dinner and finish the mystery. It's very flexible in that way. Um, and it's very easy to pack up and clean up. Very, very easy to clean up, in fact. Um, so that's Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, my number seven game on this list. At number six is one of the first few games that I own on the list, and that is The Crew. Um, the Crew is a cooperative trick-taking game where you play through a series of missions, very, very short missions, uh, in, in trying to get certain players to... Uh, win tricks with certain cards. That's a generalization. There are exceptions to that, but that's the general idea in the crew. The missions are so short in the crew, and the, and the brilliant thing about the game is even though all player you deal out pretty much the entire deck whenever you play the crew. You might even, I think you do actually deal out the, the entire deck. But you don't have to play through your entire hand. So like the first mission in the crew is, uh, I believe it's just win one, like one person has one card and they need to win a trick with that card. And as soon as they win a trick with that card, the mission is over. You get to move on to the next mission or you can stop playing. And so it's these tiny little bite-sized missions that, that really do not take very long at all. They get longer and longer, but the first two missions in particular are very fast. Um, makes it so that you can play a single hand of this game and have a satisfying experience. Um, or a single turn of the game, much less an entire hand. Uh, and because you don't have to keep playing after you solve a mission, uh, you get to move on to the next mission you really can play for a very short amount of time and move on to something else or continue playing the crew and play the next mission. So I think that makes the crew a great addition for a list of games that you can just stop at any time and have had a satisfying experience, even if you only get to play one or two missions. That's why it's my number, my number six on this list. The game that inspired this video is the Shipwreck Arcana. This is another wonderful cooperative game uh, where players are using... Um, one of two uh, numerical tokens that they draw, in fact, it's gonna be so weird to describe this game, I'm probably not even gonna try here, but you basically have one player who has some information and the other player, and you're trying to give clues to the other player so they guess a number that you have in your hand. You have to watch a video to see how it works, because this is a little weird. Um, and this, you're, you take turns doing this, where so you take turns having the information that all, the other players want and the other players are trying to guess what number you have based on the clue that you've given them. 
the turns are really, really short in Shipwreck Arcana, and each one is satisfying, because in each one, you are solving a little puzzle that doesn't take very long at all. One player is kind of determining this clue, and other players are making a guess or not making a guess if they have enough information to guess what number that you have in your hand. So this is the game that happened at the game night the other day, where we were... We, typically, you play through until you get seven correct guesses, I believe. Um, but we, uh, I think we played to like six or five because we were ready to wrap up and we played another, we were ready to play another game with the rest of the group. And it was still completely fine. It was fine that we stopped the game short because we had still had that satisfying experience of solving a number of clues and giving a number of clues in the game. So that's why the Shipwreck Arcana is my number five entry on this list. My number four entry on, uh, entry on this list is one that I've lent out to a friend. It is a wonderful, super fun game that I think is back in print now, thanks to a, a new company, and that is Coconuts. It's the only dexterity game on this list. Coconuts is kind of a silly, fun game where you're taking these giant, chunky plastic monkeys, uh, monkey catapults, you're putting a little uh, uh, gummy rubber uh, coconut on the, on the monkey catapult and trying to flick it into these cups in the middle of the table. If you hit a yellow cup, your turn is over. That's good. You've gotten rid of one of your coconuts. You're trying to get rid of your coconuts. And, and well, actually, not trying to get rid of your coconuts, but you're trying to, um, to win cups. You get that cup, and you get to add it to your little cup pyramid. If you hit a red cup, you get to take another shot. It's just silly fun, but it's surprisingly fun. Like, I don't, I don't, if you're not really into dexterity games, but you want a game that you can play with anybody at any time for any length of time, Coconuts is a fantastic game for that. Super easy to set up, take down, super easy to teach. And really, you can just take a few shots in coconut, Coconuts and have a ton of fun and then pack it up if you have to go do something else. So that's why Coconuts is my number four game on this list. At number three is Love Letter. Love Letter is a now classic filler game that doesn't take very long at all. Um, you have one card in your hand and uh, you draw another card and you play one of those cards and you do so until, until someone is won or until you play through the deck. And the deck is not very big. It's like what... 13 cards, how many cards here? 17 cards, very, very small deck. So a single game of the love letter doesn't take very long at all. Um, I, I wouldn't say that you could actually stop in the middle of, actually, no, a, a game of love letter can take a little while, it can take 30 minutes, uh, but a single round of love letter is very, very fast. Um, and you can kind of determine how long you want to play. We usually play until someone has uh, won twice, won two individual rounds, and then they win the game. But you can determine that as much as you want. You can you can elevate, you can stretch it out and say, okay, you have to win three rounds, or you just win one, and that's fine too. So kind of the flexibility in, in terms of the ultimate win condition is really nice in the love letter, and especially since every round itself feels like a game in its, of its own, um, but every, every round it doesn't last very long at all. So it is really easy to, if you do have to go, you can finish up a round really quickly and get through it, and then move on to something else. And you will have had a satisfying experience playing Love Letter, in my experience, especially the Hobbit Love Letter, um, which, uh, which uh, Ambassador Xiong gave to us, or gave to me and Megan. Awesome, awesome version of Love Letter. That's why it's my number two. My number one has one in the name of the game. You might be able to guess it right now if you've watched this channel for a while. Love Letter. Oh, I'm not, not Love Letter. <laughs> Just one. Just one is, uh, is my number one game for this category. Just One is another fully cooperative game. A number of cooperative games on this list. A fully cooperative game where you are giving a one-word clue to someone who is trying to guess a word, uh, kind of like in When I Dream. Uh, you're giving a one-word clue to someone and uh, you're trying to help them guess the word. You're always trying to help the other players at the table. But if more than one player gives the same one-word clue, uh, then the person, the guesser, doesn't get to see those clues. It's a brilliant party game. I love that it's cooperative. Uh, it scales up so well. It's another one that you can play remotely if you want, if you want to play on Zoom. Um, and we did, we have so have had so much fun playing this game. And the, we found that the score doesn't really matter. There is a way to track whether or not you win in this game. But really, the fun is just playing until everyone has maybe one or two turns to be the guesser and then ending the game. Uh, it, it, and you can stop at any time. Even if only a couple play, players have had the chance to guess a clue, all players have participated that whole time, and you've had fun, and you can stop and do something else. I think Just One is maybe the ultimate holiday game because you really can stop at any time and continue on to do something else and still have had a lot of fun playing it. Did I skip another one? I, did, I totally skipped another one. That's my number one. I'm not going to go back on that. But I'm going to go back in time a little bit and do my number two, which is Tussie Mussie. I totally missed this. I'm 
poor, poor form in today's video. So Tusty Musty by Wingspan designer Elizabeth Hargrave is a very small game from Button Shy Games in which you are taking one of two cards, you're putting one face down on the table and one face up, and you offer it to a certain player at the table. The player is always determined by the game. It's usually, I think, the player on the left or the right. Um, and you say it's an I cut you choose game. You're, you are cutting your cut decision is which card is face up and which card is face down. And that person has to choose one of those cards. They're flower cards that they're choosing. And you are playing until all players, I believe, have four of these cards, and then you score. And you can, like in Love Letter, you can continue to play multiple rounds if you want, but a single round itself is very satisfying in Tussie Mussy. It doesn't take very long at all. And it is, it is really gratifying to make these I cut you choose decisions because not only are you giving cards to other people to make a choice, but you are also keeping the card that they don't choose and you are making that choice as other players present cards to you. So a single round of Tussie Musty like Love Letter is really, really satisfying um, and, and very easy to just say, okay, we're just going to play a single round because we got to go in a minute. Let's, let's finish this round and then move on. And Tussie Musty is perfect for that. It's not my number one. Just One is my actual number one. But, uh, but Tussie Musty is a fantastic game, well-deserving of the number two slot on this list. I'm sure I've missed some great games that you can just pack up and stop and, and, and go at any given time and still have had a very satisfying experience. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about games that apply to this category or your thoughts on the games that I've mentioned in this list. Thanks.